there, this is Stacy Phillips and this is my video log for Thursday, August 22nd, 2013. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about how we view our plan, how we view um, our efforts to become optimally healthy, to, to gain health, to bring it into our lives as a direct result of things that we do. Um, if, if, if you're overweight or you're obese, as I was when I began this plan, um, I had a BMI of uh, over 48, and I weighed 272 pounds at 5 foot 3 inches on a good day. Um, if you're overweight or obese, uh, I want to tell you that you don't have to um, beat yourself up or, or feel bad about yourself. Um, right now, but you do need to take action um, to become a healthy weight. And I I'm just going to tell it to you straight. If you're overweight or obese, you're putting yourself at risk for so many um, diseases. But, you know, that even that aside, that I don't want that to be the reason, you know, that you start a plan to, to attain optimal health. The reason, and the reason that I started with is because I wanted to see what I could accomplish, what great, awesome things that I could bring into my life that I, I wasn't allowing in my life at the time as a, as a morbidly class 4 super obese uh, a woman over 40, <laughs> that I wasn't allowing into my life that I could bring into my life um, as a result of this process. So. Honestly, when I began um, this time around in July of 2010, I um, yes, I had gained you know all of my weight back. I had you know I was up to 272, but I started from a place of hope, um, not a place of fear, and I found you know through Dr. A's principles because that's exactly what he talks about in in his book, both discovering discover your optimal health, which is a, a New York Times national bestseller. Woohoo! Yay, Dr. A. Um, but he also has a book called um, Dr. A's Habits of Health, which is really our kind of our textbook um, that we utilize in in helping people achieve, um, you know, optimal health and ultra health. And when I began this process, I wasn't healthy, but I wasn't really focusing on the fact that I was unsick, that I, you know, that the fact that I was at risk for all these things, because you know that wasn't super motivating. It's only really motivating. That part is only really motivating when you go into a doctor's office and they tell you, oh, guess what? Now you have this. You know, <laughs> I had all the, you know, metabolic syndrome things starting to lead up. My blood pressure was starting to creep up. I hadn't had my blood panel done in a long time, but I knew that my triglycerides were probably higher. My HDL was probably lower. I was gaining some insulin resistance. So I know that I most likely had metabolic syndrome, the beginnings of it. Um, but no doctor ever told me um, that I was uh, had any you know diagnosable disease as far as um, obesity related. So chronic fatigue syndrome, yes, I got that in college from uh, about with EBV, but Epstein Barr virus, and I've had I've dealt really with that most of my adult life, which, you know, could have been the reason why that I gained weight. I'm not sure, but I wasn't focusing necessarily on, on finding reasons to feel bad about myself or finding reasons to be scared into doing something, into doing X, Y, Z, because I don't, I don't really respond very well to somebody telling me I should do something. Even if it's myself, I should do something. I ought to do something. I need to do something. I have to do something. I mean, that just, you know, that's like, it reminds me of death and taxes. You know, I just, I, I, I'm hoping, I, I try to avoid both. And no, I'm not a tax avoider, but I, I, I wait till the last possible minute to do my taxes. I put it off for as long as I can because it's an unpleasant task. So when you view getting healthy, as something you need to, ought to, should to, have to, someone else wants you to, you know, all these things, then it is not going to be a pleasant journey. And honestly, you're probably not going to stick to it for more than a week or two. Uh, you know, so three or four, maybe, you know, how many New Year's resolutions go by the wayside, uh, you know, by February 15th, we're, we're kind of done um, with, you know, beating ourselves into submission. So, um, when I began this journey, I decided I was going to start from a place of hope, you know, hope of what I could accomplish. 
hope of what I could uncover, hope of what I could discover about myself and about um, my strengths and and my my attributes and you know what the good things that I could bring into my life as a result of the process of getting healthy. And I have to say that it has just been beyond my wildest dreams. I mean, I, but I had to dream first for it to be beyond my wildest dreams. You know, it's just a lot of fun and, and just very fulfilling um, knowing that I'm, I'm the person that I wanted to be. I am the person that I might have been. I, I have become and I am becoming even more the person that I might have been. And, um... I think we have to we have to at least have an idea of who we want that person to be if we're going to go there if we're going to if we're going to become that person and that person is just fully us. I mean, you know, I'm not talking about changing your total identity and um becoming something you're not. What I'm talking about is becoming more of who you are. So find out who that is, dream big. Look at this as a creative process of becoming, and I am telling you what, it, there's joy in this journey when you look at it that way. Um, so that's my video log for today. Have a wonderful rest of your Thursday and gearing up for this weekend. Um, yeah, just have a great rest of your day, and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.